In Saudi Arabia, the Al Saud royal family, also known as the House of Saud, has been ruling the country since the 16th century. King Salman is now the man in charge of the family, which includes 30,000 princes, princesses, and heirs. With the family's net worth over a trillion dollars, it's no surprise many of its members live mega-rich lifestyles. But being a part of this royal family is no easy task. We're going to tell you what life is really like as a descendant from their expensive purchases, backstabbing, lies, deceit, and betrayal. Stay tuned because you won't want to miss it. If this is your first time visiting our channel, don't forget to subscribe and please give this video a big thumbs up. Today we'll be showing you the untold lives of the Saudi royal family. In 2016, it was reported that the Saudi royal family was worth $1.4 trillion and King Salman gets a hefty piece of the pie. In 2015, he was crowned as the new king following the passing of his half-brother, King Abdullah. And as of July 2017, he had a personal net worth of $17 billion. Now, this might sound like a lot of money to most people, but King Salman's wealth doesn't stretch that far, considering that he has a ton of mouths to feed in his family. King Abdullah and King Salman were both the sons of King Abdulaziz, the founder of modern-day Saudi Arabia. King Abdulaziz reportedly had 22 wives and 46 children. For most families, this seems like a crazy amount of family members, but for the members of the House of Saud, this is actually pretty normal. You see, most of the men are allowed to have several wives, and their wives have an incentive to have as many babies as possible. More babies equals more money that's paid out to their individual family every single month. It can be quite profitable for some royal family members to have dozens of kids, but we'll get more into that a bit later. King Salman's private life is a bit of a mystery. He has reportedly been married three times, and some sources believe he had 13 children as of the year 2015. With so many siblings, children, and grandchildren of his own, it's really no surprise that there is a lot of jealousy and rivalry in the House of Saud. Many of the thousands of descendants of the late King Abdulaziz have married other members in the dynasty to re-establish their status within the ruling family. If someone steps out of line or betrays the family, the House of Saud never hesitates to act swiftly. 19-year-old Princess Michelle found this out in a tragic event that happened in 1977. She was forced to marry at a young age, and despite being separated and living apart from her husband, he refused to divorce her. Sources reported that he stayed married to her because he wanted to keep the prestige that went along with being a part of the royal family. She later fell in love with the Saudi ambassador to Lebanon, a man named Khalid. When the House of Saud found out that she had been cheating on her husband, she and Khalid were publicly executed. Her passing was detailed in a documentary called Death of a Princess and caused outrage across the country, but the royal family wasn't done just yet. After a 2012 fight in a desert camp, Prince Turkey committed a heinous act against another man. The higher-ups believed they had to send out a strong message to the young descendants of the family to let them know they weren't above the law. Prince Turkey suffered the same fate as Princess Michal for his actions. King Salman later gave a public address and declared no member of the royal family, including himself, would be immune from following the country's laws. But some people weren't really buying his words. Throughout the years, most members of the royal family have proven they can get away with almost anything. Reports claim that some greedy princes have taken extreme measures just to make some quick cash. A popular money-making scheme involves Saudi princes physically taking land that's owned by commoners and reselling it to the government for a big profit. In most countries, this would be considered illegal, and the culprit would face huge punishments, imprisonment, and fines. But for the members of the House of Saud, they've been able to skirt around many laws for years. Another instance of a royal family member using their name to live above the law occurred back in 2012. A princess was accused of booking 41 rooms for five months at Paris's luxury five-star accommodation, the Shangri-La Hotel. When it came time to foot the bill, she reportedly left without paying any of the charges. This same princess also ran up a $20 million tab during a shopping spree in Paris, and when it came time to pay for her purchase, says she reportedly slipped the cashier an IOU instead. For the citizens of Saudi Arabia who aren't a part of the royal family, they're forced to abide by very strict Islamic laws. For example, two Saudi men were inspired by a YouTube video of a man who is giving out free hugs. They decided to do the same in the country's capital city. When the House of Saud caught wind of their acts, they were arrested for engaging in exotic practices. Since giving out free hugs is against the law, this would mean the royal family avoids all acts that go against their religious beliefs, right? Well, well, not so fast. Some would say the members of this family live by the motto, do as I say, not as I do. The country has a very strict ban on alcohol. That means it's illegal to make it, import it, or consume it. Those who break the law find themselves in a great deal of trouble. But despite this rule, the royal family has been known to reportedly get absolutely wasted during their secret underground parties. Consulate officials in the port city of Jeddah described a Halloween underground party that was thrown by a wealthy prince. Reports claim there was plenty of alcohol available, including a full stocked bar for
for over 150 Saudi men and women. Because it was a royal party, the police kept their distance and allowed the guests to drink and dance the night away without causing a fuss. Living a life of excess is a common theme amongst the family members, and in the past, they were all paid a huge chunk of change just for being in the royal lineage. In the mid-1990s, the lowest members of the family received a stipend of $800 a month. But for the surviving sons of the founder of the modern-day country, they were really cashing out. They reportedly received an allowance of $200,000 to $270,000 a month. His grandchildren received $27,000 a month, and his great-grandchildren received $13,000 a month. Bonus payments were available whenever a family member got married, and because of this pay structure, many members were quick to have children so they could keep receiving more and more cash. It makes more sense why the House of Saud now includes 30,000 family members, right? But the late King Abdullah tried to bring some reform to the family in 2007, just eight years before his passing. He began to cut back on the family's privileges by cutting off the cell phone service for thousands of princes and princesses. Prepaid, fancy hotel suites in the royal family's favorite hotels had been cancelled, and an old rule that allowed family members to request unlimited airline tickets had been abolished. The wife of a prince reportedly tried to board a flight with 12 of her closest companions, and they all expected to fly for free. But the new rule meant she was only allowed to take two free guests with her, which led her to become absolutely outraged. Let's just say, King Abdullah definitely wasn't the most popular man within the royal family during the final years of his life. Despite the cutbacks, the top members of the family are still reaping the benefits of being a royal descendant, and they've been known to spend their money on some pretty extravagant purchases. In 2007, a prince purchased a private jet and had it all decked out with custom pieces and fancy furniture. But before the plane even took its first flight, the prince sold the jet that had an estimated value of $500 million. Another member of the royal family, Deputy Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, saw a super yacht floating in the south of France and it caught his eye. So he decided to make an offer for it right there on the spot, and the deal was finalized within just a few hours. While the princes are living a pretty charmed life, life as a princess isn't always as glamorous. A former nanny of the royal family was able to see how the princesses lived while working in one of the palaces. She claimed the princesses would dress up in beautiful Parisian-made gowns on a daily basis, but those gowns never got to see the light of day. The princesses would stay up all night watching television, and they would sleep all day in their big, massive bedrooms. They were stuck inside the palace day after day, and they only had each other to keep themselves company. The daughters of the late King Abdullah described how their lives went from being a fairy tale to a nightmare. Growing up, their father was worth an estimated $15 billion. The princesses were able to jet off to Europe to go skiing and stay in luxurious resorts. They would go on endless shopping sprees and spend a ton of money on silk robes. And their father never hesitated to buy them jewelry and dazzling tiaras. They lived in a $740 million palace that included a helipad for their own personal helicopter. Sadly, that all changed once their mother left and fled to London to get away from the king. She was forced to marry him when she was 15 and he was 48. Because she gave birth to four daughters and was unable to give him any sons, she was told she was useless. After she fled, the king reportedly took his anger out on their daughters and forbid them from leaving their home. They claimed they were forced to live in separate dark quarters of his palace, completely isolated from the outside world. The luxury trips were cut short, and all of the pricey gifts came to a screeching halt. Their father wouldn't allow them to get married, so they could never leave his home. He also promised them that after he passed away, he would make sure his sons would continue to hold them hostage. Despite what you've learned so far about the House of Saud, there are some good changes that are now in motion. In 2017, King Salman ousted his nephew as the next in line to the throne and appointed his son Mohammed as the deputy crown prince. Being so young in age means Mohammed is able to better relate to younger Saudis, and he has put some new measures in motion to shift the focus of the country. To decrease the number of Saudis who vacation abroad, the country has decided to bring some fun back to Saudi Arabia. They started by lifting a 1982 ban that prohibited movie theaters from being in the country. Other forms of entertainment have also been constructed, including comedy shows, monster truck competitions, and a Comic-Con convention in the capital city. In 2017, the Saudi family also lifted a ban that prohibits women from driving. The royal order is set to take effect in June 2018. These are just a few of the tiny changes the royal family has implemented, but outsiders are hopeful that those at the top of the House of Saud will continue to make more positive changes in the near future. This brings us to the end of our video. We hope you enjoyed it. Were you shocked to hear about the untold lives of the Saudi royal family? Don't forget to leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe so you can be notified when we upload a brand new video. See you next time!